yeah, so the whole thing's going to have to be rebuilt from the ground up. And as I said, the only thing that, that can be kept retained in this device is the basic process that goes on that, was, that you know, has been around since the 60s. Um, certain new processes have sprung up, but they've proven to be problematic and environmentally damaging. Um, very damaging and, and very inefficient, very expensive to run. Um, Silly, it's not logical that you can't you can't break it. So the industries have shut us out, and we'll just clarify here that I'll try to make this my last this is my last um, stage. Um, but basically, um, the industry was accepting people into the into the fold, and we were going to try to make a difference using creativity and art and and funnily enough, dance and theatre. It sounds a bit strange, but that's how it was going to work. And it's been confirmed on YouTube and other places where, where this is the kind of approach that corporations should take. But it's out of, it's out of, it's out of trend anymore. It's out of, it's out of phase. I mean, I'm trying to basically... The, the legacy people who, who were spearheading this charge, I'm trying to wake them up and bring back the good times so they, they can sort of be inspired to... to you know, to have hope that they can achieve this goal, but I've actually seen them in my, I've got them in my local area, they're all over the place. Most of them have actually lost interest in the product or they've given it up because they can't get into the industry and they feel very sad because they're focused on the job and they can't get the job and if they can't get the job they have to replace it with something else. Many of them work as travel agents, many of them work in supermarkets, many of them run, you know, food shops. Many of them are migrants too, hard workers, but they can also get very nasty when they can't, you know, because it's poverty. They're like ghetto. They're like they become like ghetto rats now. A certain group of them I reached out to and gave them video discs of my of my work, which and I found that they had been. They were actually all on. They were actually most of them were on marijuana. You look at them on Google Plus, and the thing is, a normal person would say, "Oh, that person's just a, just a dope smoker." But then you've got to examine why are they a dope smoker? Why have they become that way? There you have it. I've worked out who they are. They're the people that have got you as a target. They're the ones who, who I saw in the industry that were being respected once and then they just lost their jobs. They've got an R&D expert who worked for a couple of big firms and he's now he made a mistake in buying a chicken shop but the thing was he can't get into the industry and he, he spilled the beans. You know, he spilled some pretty scary information that I had actually got correct. But these people were deeply depressed. They still played with their equipment anyway. But they don't do it with any vision. They just do it like it's, a, it's purely an automatic function, an autoplay function. But that's not the way it should be. It's very dead, deadly. But the thing is, they want now. I've, I gave them video discs, you know, just crude demonstrations, just to just to give them some kind of hope and show them something. There's one thing they're missing: it's love. They don't get it from anyone. It must, as, yeah. So this man, I gave it to him, and now he wants to basically get back in the, in the industry, but he's, he's, he wants to join a big company, but he can say to him, you can't go back there, you can't go back there, they won't let you in. And I've, got a lot, I've done a lot of online research as well as, I can back it up in both real time and online, and basically this man, well, I'll now dump the seed as to what the product is. I know we've got the technology. I know that we've got like at least a million people around the world who are focused on this technology alone, but the, but many of them, have, as I said, have lost interest in the technology or they've put it down because they can't get to it in a job. So many of them disguise themselves as dope smokers or they they try to take on other interests. Computer games, Xbox players, um, people who just play, review gadgets online. There are, I don't know how many there are, but I'd say they probably make up a huge portion of YouTube and, and Google Plus alone. And you've got to be—they won't reveal much. They're very shy. They're very scared of being abused. Um, some of them are more averse in their in their videos, and they seem to be—you know—but you've got to show them some kind of respect because if you don't show them respect, they'll either pull away from you in, in terror or they'll attack you with, you know. They don't like outsiders because they've just become very secretive. Um, but the thing is, they recognise me, they respect me. But the problem is, I, I need some more help to get to get them to or to function. So the thing is, I want to create some kind of 
um, media coverage. You now the thing is, I don't ask for any money. You know, I don't ask for money because, and the thing is, I'm willing to to even make a fool of myself for 15 minutes if that's what it's going to take, because I care about them. They've got no hope. But many of them can't even are not even game enough to stay on to use YouTube or Google Plus or social media. They are that depressed. They're shot. Their minds are shot. As I said, many of them are doing this. They're holding. They're having. They're taking marijuana to relieve the pain. They're that. They're that depressed. It's terrible. But they can be fixed. They can be reformed. They're also costing taxpayers money in disability pensions because many of them have got Asperger's syndrome and they've been told they can't work because the industry wants less task-focused people. Um, rubbish, I say, because people said, you know, there's an article that says Bill Gates, in, you know, you, Bill Gates himself had Asperger's possibly suspected. Same with Einstein, but now they won't let the Einsteins be the scientists or, or the innovators be the innovators. They want people who are more people, 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 but the problem is they are not suitable and we can't fight them. So my this guy wants me to be a spokesperson. He wants me to, to create media awareness of Asperger's syndrome and other related areas because this, this is a very serious. This is affecting the environment. It's affecting world peace. Um, it's affecting quality. And I've got a lot, you know, I'm very good at processing data. I'm not so good at speaking. I'm sorry, but I'm very good at, at picking patterns and grabbing information and I know these people very well. I've dealt with them in my work years. I've, I've, I've now worked out who they are and of course not perfectly. There's always error but, but I'm very accurate at detecting them. Um, but basically um, they are depressed so basically all I need is 15 minutes to basically take some of my best YouTube videos and fire them through the TV sets. Um, as I said, no money. I don't want money. I don't want any kind of that kind of thing because money is not something I'm driven, driven with, right? But if it's going to help make these people happy and make them believe in themselves, that's the first step. And the thing is, they've got to form online communities. Then we've got to create a community hookup. They've got to learn to have Google Hangouts, and not be afraid of social contact even with themselves because they'll often fight themselves, even write nasty comments about how badly. So they're moving as singularities. Really single entities all around the world and they can't build this product if they're all sitting around the world. Many of them don't have money, many of them are migrants, they need a, they need a second chance um, and many of them will die not knowing their full potential because of this. Um, this man wants me to get them networking, get them creating their own creative work, recreate a sort of 1990s aesthetic um, except we don't have the support of the industry and then after that once they've learned to talk online and to communicate and to and to start sharing ideas and product demos, you know, whatever they can get their hands on, because they're really helpful people online, then we can create, then this man can basically locate them, you know, locate them and then he can summon, and he, because he's got the money and he's got, and he's in the industry, right, I mean big time, well he can then find them and then arrange a jet. Now this is not going to happen overnight but he wants to basically create a Silicon Valley somewhere out west I think in Sydney. So the people who are disrespected by the public, the normal public, will have their wish and because they don't get along, we just don't get along with them. We'll never, the normal people and the people who are the scientists and the Asperger, people with Asperger syndrome, they'll never talk. They'll never get along. They'll always be this fighting. They'll always be crushed by them. They don't, they're not, the normal people tend not to be violent, but they tend to be very derisive and very, they always make distributed comments about migrants, about geeks, about technology, nerds. They call us bottom feeders. And the thing is, we can't prove anything to them if we can't have any money or any social connection. So we've got to make our own exclusive community. And I believe it can be done. If, if the media, I know the media is controlled by the same demographic. And that's, and I, I've been spending all this time trying to throw data around and trying to inspire people. Um, it's very difficult to break into this and I need these people to wake up and then this man can then in due, in due course, when we've had arrangements made, then he can pick them up in planes, even if they're just economy jets. We don't, we're not big on money. Most of us are not used to money. So 
and then you can just arrange the transport and you can basically take them out of the, out of all communities in the world as much as you, you know, well, and then dispatch them somewhere. So people don't like migrants, they're discriminated against migrants all the time and, these, and migrants form, I think, the majority of these people. Well, the migrants can be taken away from the, the whole community. This community can be a community in a semi-detached environment away from the public because we want to make the public happy and we don't want to be this class struggle and fighting and, and you know many of them have resorted to vandalism and violent crimes it's terrible so they're actually hurting they're causing themselves damage to their reputation and they're also damaging the people who we call the oppressors because the oppressors are very law abiding as in they obey the laws they'll call the police on us if there's any if there's any whiff of a problem and and then of course, they're the violent ones. We are the, the demographic I'm talking about. Tend to, especially if they're the migrant types, tend to become violent. So these guys are more like their their, their discriminative behaviour is not so much physically threatening. So they basically got the upper hand. They could, they've got every right you could say to call the police because their lives are under in threat. Their property's been damaged. But I don't want to encourage that kind of culture because. That shows that we cannot exist with them. We cannot coexist peacefully anymore. It's just nothing more than a comp. It's more nothing more than the Bronx in in the middle of the northern beaches in Sydney, for example. We can't have that Bronx confronting the the, the upper middle class anymore. It won't work. It's proven. It's causing more damage. So the thing is, we've got to send them out west, and the Silicon Valley is the final goal. And I'll just reveal a product in in the last. You know, it's a very unpopular product, but this man has been wanting to do it for 20 years. It's, it is basically, it involves a form of crude AI, well it's not really crude, it's the best AI on earth. It's a safe application of AI, safer than androids which have been produced. It cannot walk, it cannot run, and it's a, it's a product that will actually make people happy. It's a product that has a huge market, a self-guided photocopier able to take orders just like a, a human being, a non-demanded human being. It can be spoken to and it'll, it, of course there is not, it is not going to be perfect like anything, it's going to still have an error rate but it's a very, it's going to be a very big project and I can think that there's no other project that a geek could be more excited about than working with this because a photocopy of Red Group is, is used in so many different types of physics but the thing is, I don't want to forget about renewable energy because that is indeed very important to have that running in parallel. You know, renewable energy, proper recycling facilities. Now, this machine's meant to last about, have a lifespan of about 25 years. You use materials like more metals because plastics are so complicated to engineer. And if the machine itself could last 25 years, we don't have to recycle it. We don't have to tear it down. And if we have it used old-fashioned common sense, Maybe the only parts of this machine that need to be upgraded would be parts of, you know, gradually you just you replace modules, you replace components, you don't replace a whole device. Now, disposing of a photocopier like we do now, if that's, if they, if that's how bad the industry has become, I can't think of any, anything bigger than a photocopier and, and more damaging to the environment and, and our landfill than that. I mean, but then that, that's, that'll start to set a precedent then because that could then flow on into the beleaguered car industry. You know, we could have car, we could have flying cars. You know, we could have jetpacks. And people have been actually whinging about, where are the jetpacks? Where are the flying cars? And then cars are very dangerous machines too. They, they kill. And the industry's been a problem. And we've got unemployment happening down in Melbourne in the car industry. Imagine if we could have automated cars, cars that would drive themselves. I don't know what the rev heads are going to think. I mean, I do believe there should be like drag trucks, you know, places for where where diehard, you know, manual drivers can still enjoy their machines. You know, take it out west and have huge tracks so we can safely do your hoon activities and do it for nothing. Because I love the hoon culture, but I don't like the hoon culture when it's tearing up the highways, killing themselves and killing others. But that's what you get, and many of them would be in the category I've spoken about. Very dangerous. But imagine automated cars. You don't have to even think, you just drive and there's less carnage. There you go, I think we'll truncate it here, but, but, but I thank you for watching this stuff anyway, but I really want to see it. Innovation rock. Goodbye.